I'm going to talk about kind of an allegory of climate cancer crisis. Well, what is an allegory? So, uh, an allegory is a definition, a story or poem, right? It, it talks and has a deeper meaning, a connected meaning. And I'm going to tell you this allegory about my own cancer crisis and the crisis that humanity and all life on this planet Earth faces now. What is my own cancer crisis? Shortly after um, being diagnosed with can uh, cancer, that was literally within a few months of giving a TEDx talk four years ago. And my allegory here is my own body. Inside of me was growing the cancer that eats away at my energy and then throws pollutants into my body. And that is what we are doing on the planet Earth. We are drawing resources from the earth, fossil resources. And that is insatiable energy. And that is drawing it up and throwing it into the atmosphere and generating pollution at an epic scale that's driving up the temperature of the planet. In my own allegory, if I hadn't done everything I could, I would be six feet under. But in this, I had my friends, my families, the fantastic surgeons that did battle for me, with me. And I am here today in front of you, still struggling. I underwent general anesthesia 10 days ago for parts of me that are still needing to be fixed. I am the Humpty Dumpty, and they're putting me back together again. We can do. We can do the same thing for our planet. This is how we are using energy. And you can see North America Europe, China, and India are culprits of the highest order. Of course, there are minor players in the third world. Let's take a look. This is pollution. How on earth does the Amazon make so much pollution? That is truly amazing, right? That is, we're cutting it down and burning it. And this is a tragedy for the Brazilians. This is right here. If Brazil keeps cutting down their forest, they will be two degrees Celsius higher by 2050, plus the two from climate change. Humanity and the rest of the planet needs that. We desperately need it to sequester. We have to reforest at an epic scale. But if they just follow the law and help people reforest, it will be even better than it is, cooler than it is right now. This is the sixth mass extinction right here. We're going to lose biodiversity at an epic scale if we don't change. 
I work on lizards. I'm a mathematician too. I can predict where these extinctions are occurring, and I go and study them. I know we're going to lose at least eight families of lizards. That's how we define mass extinctions. 30% or more of all species of lizards on the planet. I've traveled around the world. This is my latest expedition last January to study and see if what we predict is true. This lizard is going extinct even faster than we predicted, because not because we're wrong, because climate is changing faster. This is a family of lizards in China and Thailand. If we leave things as they are, it will begin to go extinct shortly. And then these, by 2070, will all be gone. We'll have it in zoos, maybe. They're struggling to breed it right now. This is Mexico, where we know of now hundreds of local extinctions. What is a local extinction? In cancer terms, that would be like your whole neighborhood goes extinct. Cancer kills the moth. Right away, boom. That's happening now in populations. These are the birds of the Mojave Desert. In our latest paper, we show 40% of the sites are already extinct. And 30% of the species are affected. And that's happening around the world. This is a crisis. This, we have a moral and a political obligation. And yet, how on earth can I have hope when it is the end of the world as we know it and I feel fine? Ten years ago, I knew it didn't just lie in us adults. I knew to train the young people, and so did all my scientist friends. And out of this, we now have the youth rebellion against climate change. How do we save the planet? We are tribal, right? We have tribalism in our government. Demand change, vote for the tribe that you want, and maybe it'll be the one that saves the planet. Your children will lead you forward in the next round of voting as you age. I work on game theory, mathematician. Tribalism rules. Unless we play the game tit for tat, cooperate, and defect. Tit for tat. Start with cooperate, but if companies, not your neighbor, if companies do not reduce their own energy to the Paris Climate Accord, then the fact provides something from them. But if they change, then you can buy. Cooperate, just follow the rules. Turn the cooperate into activists, and we can deny the climate deniers, boycott corporations. I propose green energy certification. So we buy green energy produced products and we will win. Us activists will win. Don't be a consumer. Stop thinking you are a consumer. We borrow life on this planet. We borrow it for 70 or 80 years. Then we're back in the dirt. And our children take up that from us, what we learn. Bring us forward into a future. Thank you.